So thank you very much for the question and thanks to FEMNET. You know, um, I'm very, very pleased always to be, you know, um, interacted and part of a feminist platform. So um, there is a very important question that I often ask myself, you know, being um, working in this field and, and, you know, part of this field, you know, for over, for, for over 20 years is uh, how, how relevant you know, um, our feminist practices and engagement with feminism in Africa, how relevant into uh, women and girls live realities and, and how relevant the women's rights agenda and gender equality to the majority of women and girls and, and to what extent, you know, the feminist movement um, in our part of the world is capable of representing the day-to-day -day challenges of the masses of women uh, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to what extent we are actually capable of speaking about their day-to-day -day challenges and to what extent we are capable of equipping them with the strategies they need, you know, um, um, to go through it. Uh, so those are really core questions I think we need to ask ourselves often when we talk about campaigning and advocacy. So, so I think my response to the first question is going to be more or less kind of trying to theorize, you know, and, and conceptualize the first question, I try to understand it better myself and all of us. Um, a long time ago, you know, um, I, I used to do a lot of field work. I still do, but not as much as I wished. Um, I mean, um, I have an excellent team, but it, I've always felt, you know, that as feminists, it was very important for us, you know, to, to be involved with communities as much as we can. You know, so the question is, you know, when I work with grassroots women, why do we have to invest a lot of effort and a lot of energy to bring women into our platforms? Um, and I just say, give an example. Why do we have to, you know, for example, to tell women that, well, please come, you know, we're going to take care of your transport, you know, um, there is a meal that's provided. But on the other hand, you know, if it's a, a religious leader or a tribal leader, for example, you know, uh, coming to any of the community's platform, um, not only the women would come, you know, but they will come and contribute to those platforms. And, and, and this is really, uh, for me, it's a very critical question. So in addition to the political power um, that tribes um, and religion, you know, holds in our society, you know, uh, um, it's, it's also part of, you know, both, you know, our culture, our religion is part of the women's identity. So to what extent, you know, um, 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 you know, women's rights and gender equality, to what extent women see that as part of who they are, to what extent they aspire, you know, equality to the point that it becomes part of their identity. And they are, and from there, they are very eager to come and join or to establish on their own and create platforms you know, uh, that would advocate for their, for their equality. I think um, one of the challenges that actually it's facing us, you know, as, as African feminists, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm a full-time feminist, uh, is that we really need to reclaim our own feminism and, and to recall our own experiences and values based on, on our own reality and to transfer that into a discourse and conversation that makes sense to the majority of women that we work with, to the point that they see themselves in our campaigns, in our advocacy effort, and to the point that um, um, they identify um, with it. So I, I don't know if I, if I answer your question, John pierre Thank you, thank you so much. I think participants are, have got uh, enough insights on different techniques for advocacy. 
Uh, my second question is, why, what kind of campaigning tactics do you think are most transformative, not only in terms of the change they aim to achieve, but also in terms of how they build the power of women and women's rights organizations? I think in any campaign, you know, um, um, relevancy is key, you know, um, um, and I, I mean, definitely the whole stakeholders analysis and all this, those are really critical and important tools, you know, but I think, you know, the relevancy of what we are campaigning about, you know, and the type of language and how we communicate that you know, it's are, are very, very critical. And I'm going to give an example about, you know, Sudan revolution and being Sudanese my, my, myself, you know, I, I'm going to speak about the role that women and girls, they played in the revolution. Um, and, and those are really very traditional women who were part of very traditional society. But through the years, you know, they understood very clearly you know, that this ruling regime does not work for them. It makes them suffer, it targets them, it criminalizes them, and they are really, they saw that it's part in, on it, like, you know, it's in their favor, you know, that they should involve in, 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 in the political struggle. So those women they particip who participated in the revolution, participated in the protest, they were not part of an NGO communities. You know, and 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 they were not politicians. They were regular women. They were workers. They were street vendors. You know, but what really attracted them is the cause and what drives them, which are really elements into the success of any campaign. You know, the drivers of the campaign. You know, is the sense of injustice. You know, and and the fact that they really deserve. Uh, better uh, and and so from there they got involved extensively they were um, very much involved in community organization they were part of neighborhood committees they were part of resistant committees and ultimately we had um, um, a protest with over 65 percent of the participants were were women you know, and, and, and that's really um, um, something that we are still struggling to hold on to. We don't want to lose that momentum. And what we are trying as feminist organizations through our campaigns and through our advocacy and as, as feminist activists is to meet those women somewhere and to engage with them you know, and to learn from them as well. You know, because the thing with campaigning, you know, you can't lead a campaign on your own. Campaigning is a collective work, you know, an isolated campaign dies away. So if we are planning a campaign, we have to bear in mind that we really need to engage other people, you know, interact and learn from them. And one of the interesting things, for example, that I have learned from, from the women who were part of the protest. I mean, and, and they needed help with, you know, they were complaining all the time about, well, you know, we, we struggle being part of the neighborhood committees because the times of the meeting, for example, it could be late at night, we have children, we cannot go and be part of this. The, um, um, you know, we, we struggle with the fact that we don't have much support. We are exposed to domestic violence. All these obstacles, you know, as feminists, we need to support women to understand and comprehend, you know, that this is part of the patriarchal structures, that those are really challenges that we are going to face while we are engaged in, in, in activism and, and, and so on. So those are really very important roles if we want a broader engagement, you know, in our campaigns and, 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 and advocacy. Um, so so the, the, the feminist movement, you know, should enable women to understand, 
you know, uh, the root causes of injustice, you know, particularly in our part of the world, particularly in, 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 in Africa. And, and I think uh, uh, that's, that's really very, very important in, in successful um, uh, campaigning. I don't know if that answers your question. Thank you so much. I think the audience got a lot from your experience. Let me give back the floor to Maureen. Thank uh, you. There is, oh, okay. Uh, do, I do I still have time? Because there is something I'd like to add. Yes, please go ahead, Hala. Okay. Uh, so I, I, the, the, what I would like to add, you know, um, that as, as African feminists, you know, in my view, uh, we, we must and we should connect, you know, in all our advocacy, in all our campaigns, you know, into social justice issues and, and anti-colonialism. Anywhere in Africa, the struggle for gender equality is part of a larger struggle. And, and, and it's, it's part of the struggle for justice, it's part of the struggle for democracy. And, and this is basically when I talked earlier about relevancy. I mean, um, um, and, and this is what puts things into perspective. You know, we shouldn't isolate our struggle, you know, for gender equality from the broader struggle. We should all the time find ways to connect, you know, between our struggle, our aspiration and desire for justice into the broader community um, you know, uh, desire and a struggle uh, uh, for, uh, for justice. The other important thing that I really um, um, think it's critical and important is in the narrative and the language we are using, you know, in our campaign. The relevancy is key. We should not act as outsiders. You know, uh, we have, uh, as, as African women, we have a long history, you know, of, of, of being feminists. You know, uh, uh, all we, we come from a lineage, all our grand grandmothers, I mean, personally, my two grandmothers were working women, you know, um, we're not domesticated women, you know, we are, we have a long history of empowerment that we need to utilize in our campaign and advocacy and our, and our discourse. And, and this is key into um, the success of any engagement that we would, uh, or any, um, um, it, it helps us to influence, you know, um, societies and, and create transformation. Thank you. Thank you, Hala. That, that was incredibly inspiring and definitely, I think, um, some points which are so important, especially... Can I put these? No, no, darling, it's okay. Can, can you just be quiet for a few minutes, okay? Just a few minutes, you just have to be quiet and then I'll finish talking. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so uh, there, there were lots of key points there, especially rooting, um, rooting our ensuring our campaigns are relevant, but also rooting them in the collective and making sure that they respond to the needs of the masses and that they speak to their issues. And also I think the wider one about not isolating our struggles, uh, not isolating the, the struggles that we have and tying them to the struggles, I think that increases sorry, sorry, relevance, sorry, sorry, but also, sorry. it's okay then, <laughs> uh, but also, um, uh, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, but also supporting women to comprehend uh, the barriers that are caused by, uh, by patriarchy as they seek to engage in campaign issues. Um, and I think also understanding the, dri the, the drivers of injustice, I think that was such a, a big issue. And then uh, the point Hala made about the Sudan revolution and how many women participated because they understood and um, that the regime wasn't working for them. So I think we really have to sort of tap into, into what's relevant for the wider community if we expect them to uh, participate in our campaigns. Um, now I'll just open the floor for questions from participants, um, if there are any. Um, either raise your hand or take yourself off mute if you want to and ask your question. Uh, 
we have some reflections on the chat, uh, something from Rachel. Okay. But Rachel. also just feel free to say something or yeah, put it on the chat. So I'll read uh, Rachel's one and then, um, yeah, if anybody else has a question. Go ahead. So it says, uh, Rachel says, Carpool always connect our struggles to equality and justice to existing documented African women's hair stories. I have a question. Can I can I go ahead, Maureen? Yes. Through you. Yes. 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 Thank you very much, Hala. Really inspiring and listening to you, um, and and great great tactics there that you share and remind us about the Sudan Revolution. I think I still remember it vaguely and how in war we were off. Um, I think a quick question, and I probably you may have alluded to it, but just something that I'm wondering about campaigns. Uh, particularly campaigns that are really powerful. You know, I like what you said, like 65% were women. Um, they were not, you know, collectives in NGOs and, you know, all that. But, you know, just women who have, were saying enough is enough. They were tired of the discrimination and injustice. Um, I think the quick question that I have is, how do we have the staying power? Because there's that moment in a campaign, you feel there's that collectiveness, there's that awareness that, you know, um, that, that has more than 65% women. But how do we sustain that? I don't call it anger, but I'll say that momentum that, you know, brought them together and pulled them to the streets. Uh, because the, the regime is still not just, you know, the regime still continues to violate women. Um, so do we wait for another moment of, oh God, we have had enough and then hit the streets, what sustains, what, what is it that you'd say that when we are thinking about a campaign, uh, because campaigns also have their own cycles and season, what do you think um, would be um, something that makes that campaign, you know, still stays relevant until um, uh, whatever it is that we're agitating for, uh, we can be able to say at least we brought down the regime that is already violating us as women, I don't know. But yeah, just, just quick thoughts, you know, top of your head. No, thank you, I, I think that's, that's, thank you so much. I think that's a brilliant question, you know, and this is the question that, you know, um, all of us working, you know, um, not only in Sudan, but other parts of the region, how do we sustain that, you know, um, desire to continue to involve, you know, how, how can we, you know, maintain the flames of resistance, you know, again, it's all, you know, um, you know, uh, this, patriarchy who knows exactly what to do, you know, uh, uh, pushing women back again, you know, okay, now it's, it's over, you know, you have contributed, we appreciated you while you were part of the revolution, we called you queens, but now it's time to go home, you know, and, and, and now it's our game. Now this is our platform. You know, um, so the elites, uh, the, the the patriarchs, and 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 so on. So this is um, this is the critical question. And in my view, as I said, you know, um, and 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 as you know, we all um, experience. We should never alienate ourselves. You know, from the broader um, um, women. Um, um, you know, and 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 I think you know. Um, we shouldn't uh, succumb and accept, you know, uh, that our role, which is important, you know, to have a structure, to have an institution, to be part of NGOs, you know, but that's not it. You know, we should um, um, navigate, um, you know, women within societies uh, at large and see how can we best connect with them. You know, and how can we best actually use whatever creative and innovative tools that's available, you know, uh, beside the, um, you know, the traditional classroom capacity building. I mean, I've worked with women that I felt that they have a lot to give me, that I really learned a lot from them. You know, so the idea of, you know, of approaching women who are not 
and 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 we don't want to enjoy it. I mean, that's very dangerous. You know, also, you know, the idea that you know people who are part of the NGOs, part of the civil society, we really want to structure NGOs everyone. That's extremely dangerous idea, and I don't think we should. We should. We should engage and interact with people you know, in their own position and, and learn from them and see how can we best support them, you know, and how can we actually see, uh, how, how can we, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, work with them. One of the things, I'll give you an example, one of the things that we have learned is that, you know, um, using public protest as, uh, as an effective modality, like, you know, so we, for example, we, are, we want to, to change the legal framework. What's the best way that it can be done? And the women say, well, you know, we have to organize a protest. You know, as an NGO, that was not one of our modalities of campaigning, but this is what they want. You know, so, so what we did is, okay, we created a very flexible, broad umbrella that it allowed them to be there and it allow us also to be there a platform beside the institutional sort of platform where we all could exist and organize protests you know and 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 sometimes they will say well you know we want to uh, stand and hold signs in front of this so there is so many ways that or we want to organize a sitting or we want to join you know in solidarity this group so there is so many tools and modalities you know and and very creative tools that women would want to use and i think it should be an interactive process and we should work you know with women where where they are to sustain their existence and, and their presence in the public space. The, the other thing, we should also develop modalities to support women, you know, who would like to exist in all kinds of spaces. You know, it's not only about the parliament or the offices, you know, women, you know, can, the, the, the idea, you know, for women to exist equally in public spaces and to share equally the public space. So that's that's something that's really um, very important, I think, for uh, for us to understand. The other thing, I I, I don't think we should um, undermine, um, you know, uh, and this is very very tricky and important thing. I don't think we should impose a very specific or certain point of reference. You know, um, uh, we should accept that women are a very diverse population. You know, we have women who uh, who has a strong faith. We have women who believes in their tradition. But ultimately, you know, the conversation about justice and equality, you know, it shouldn't contradict anyone, faith or traditions or culture. So it shouldn't be either or, you know, and that's that's also something that we're learning, you know, uh, um, to navigate and and to interrogate and 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 to engage with. I don't know if I answered my your your question. Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hala. Yes, you did. Thanks, Hala. The the chat is now really fiery and burning up, so people are clearly inspired. So there's a question for you, um, Hala. Sudan's revolution has anchored the role of the role the women play towards a country's liberation the African human rights system and the Maputo protocol should recognize this in its entirety. The country, the country, the story continues to be documented with, with the limited contribution of women. Um, is the contribution of women documented anywhere? How have Sudan women documented this? That, that, that's really, this is one of our own limitation is our capacity to document, you know, our own stories. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's there, it's part of, of our oral history, but formal documentation, you know, an acknowledgement of the women participation in the Sudan revolution, it's yet to happen. It's not happening. And it's interesting, as I said, you know, there is resentment 
from the patriarchal institution, from the patriarchal elites, you know, to recognize, you know, the fundamental role that women has played beyond the tokenism. So that's also something that's constantly happening. Um, it, it's really a struggle um, um, and, and it will continue to be, um, as, as you know, but uh, I, I definitely, I, I think that's a brilliant question. I think the participation of women in the revolution, it's, it should be documented, it should be added to the narrative of African women participation in the struggle, you know, uh, from um, colonialism times, uh, uh, all the way through the nationalist states and all the broad de democracy struggle, it's always been hidden. And, and that's really a critical point. I, I, I totally agree with you. And, and it's our obligation as African feminists, you know, is to try our best, you know, to, uh, uh, to do that, you know, and, and, and to force and enforce the acknowledgement, you know, of, of our participation in the broader struggle. Thank you for the question, yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> there's, there's another question. That's my kids in the background. Um, so uh, the next one is from Shailene from Wiley. She says, this is inspiring. What strategy do we use to successfully mobilize numbers to be a part of the campaign? And relevancy. I think, yeah, yeah, relevancy, okay. You have to be relevant, you know? Uh, um, uh, when women participated in the Sudan revolution, there was a huge philanthropic, philanthropic uh, efforts that's not really been highlighted. You know, the level of philanthropy, and I'm talking about, you know, just community philanthropy. Women, you know, they will make tea and mandazi every morning, and they will take it to the uh, protest, to the city locations. You know, they will cook and they will bring that every day, you know, um, and, and, and so, so there is a massive contribution and that contribution, it came from the fact that, you know, they felt that they, um, relevancy and ownership also, by the way. So they felt they own this struggle and it's a struggle for them. It's a struggle that will contribute to the improvements of their lives. And it's a struggle that will contribute to the improvements of their families' lives. And, and, and this, those are really key issues. You know, um, uh, designing and, and going for a campaign, you know, um, that is not relevant. And even if it's relevant, if it's not even used um, the, the right narrative, and if it's not owned um, by the people, you know, that, that are, that they should drive it, you know, forward, you know, um, it ends up to be very isolated. So, so I, I always, I always, and this is something I have learned, you know, I, I always speak to activists and, you know, to feminists across this continent that we really have to use our own language, our own rhetoric, you know, what, what really works for our communities. You know, and and um, and and we should allow the community to develop, you know, their own discourse and how do they want uh, to involve. And and I think the, you know, the enjoyization of the feminist movements, um, it kind of it isolated, you know, the movement for a long time, you know, and it made us um, um, less populist. And, 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 and thus less influential. And, um, you know, um, and, and, and this is, of course, it's coming from, you know, from different, uh, uh, different reasons. I mean, uh, there is a lot of hostility, uh, but we also have to understand that this hostility, it's politically driven. It's, it's, it's not a hostility that's coming from society, as I said, you know, because as African women, you know, we, we, were, we were feminist by nature, you know, <laughs> we own, you know, our destiny and, and our livelihood from long time ago, you know, um, and, 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 and things like that. So it's definitely a political hostility. 
and 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 we need to be able to see that all the time and and not to submit uh to that you know and 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 and, and we shouldn't allow that to block us you know from uh from engaging as much as possible uh with the broader um struggles uh, while maintaining our own position and stance which is very very critical and important Thank you. Uh, and yet another question from Amwik. Um, it says, Hala, thank you for your presentation. Did women in NGOs mobilize them or was it spontaneous? And I think this is particular to the Sudan revolution. Did I, women, I, go ahead. I think women in the NGOs, they, uh, uh, I mean, uh, and I'm one of them. You know, I, I think that was definitely, you know, that was coming out of the struggle for social justice. That was driven by, you know, um, the women uh, desire and aspiration for justice. They found themselves, uh, and women are part of, you know, of, 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 of the broader movement for justice, for democracy, you know, but then, you know, the role, as I said, of, of the feminist movement, you know, the, the role that we found ourselves now playing, and it's very important role, is that, you know, how we can support the women to stay and not to be pushed back again, you know, into the margin. And, 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 and this is the real struggle. But when they came out, they came out, you know, uh, because they felt that it's, uh, you know, it's their role to push and to be part of the, of the broader struggle. And, and their engagement was welcome at the beginning. Women, they bring numbers, you know, women, they bring uh, aspiration, they bring hope and they bring support. And the participation of women in the broader protest it also make the protests more sophisticated, you know, and less violent um, and, and, and all these things. But the minute, as I said, you know, the transformation happened, and we have seen that also in, in other countries where women were part of armed resistance, for example, in Ethiopia, in Eritrea, and so on, the minute the transformation happened, women are expected to go back. And this is, this is here, comes the role of the feminist movement, is how we can sustain, as, a, as a, the colleague asked the question, you know, Ferris, how we can sustain and keep the women present, you know, within the broader democracy and social justice movement, yet, you know, for them to be aware of the feminist agenda and to push for the feminist agenda as part of the broader struggle. That's a, this is where we are at, and it's such a difficult struggle. And 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 it is the role of the of the feminist of the feminist movement. Yeah. So the question yeah. is um, is about the coordination of the campaign and what yeah. was the role of media and politicians in the campaign. So. Uh, media critical and, and media is not homogenic, you know, um, we, ha we definitely have to identify our allies within the media. Um, and I think, you know, um, uh, in Africa, you know, and you have to excuse me, I'm speaking collectively, it's just based on my limited experience, but usually it's, uh, it is the case. We need to invest more on, uh, you know, on, on, on feminist media. And we need to invest more, you know, on, on female journalists. And I think, you know, um, um, this is something that we have not been doing as much. Um, so uh, we're learning, you know, that having uh, the right media, it's extremely um, helpful, you know. Yes, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello. We can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, and, and the most important thing... Oh, we've lost you, sorry. You're muted, Hala. Hala, you're mute, yes. You're, you're on mute, if you just unmute. Sorry, 
Yeah. So, so what I was saying, you know, having a feminist media and having a female journalist, you know, understanding how to develop a counter narrative against all the hostility um, of women occupying public spaces is critical. You know, uh, I mean, there is, I mean, patriarchy is very sneaky and very well trained, as we all know, and they have their ways you know, of creating fear, you know, and of pushing back, you know, women into the traditional roles. Uh, uh, for example, you know, there was an article I remember that came just a few days ago, and, and, and the article were speaking critically about uh, women who are uh, living in groups, in, in group, uh, like, you know, as single women, you know, who are living in, in, in apartments or in a house within a certain neighborhood. And, and uh, the article is speaking about, you know, that those women, those places are becoming more like a brothels, you know, and those are professional women, working women who are living, you know, and, but this is one way, you know, so it's, a uh, it's not, uh, it's targeting uh, uh, women who are living in their own, but it's also a, a very well crafted article. So, unless we are prepared and we have well trained, you know, media that can respond to this type of, 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 of articles and so on. So, so, having a friendly media is critical. I mean, I always thought that uh, your questions about politicians, you know, I've, um, I always thought that, um, um, uh, you know, in, in, in our parts of the world, I think politicians are, you know, our political institutions are patriarchal institutions. There, there is no questions about it. I mean, um, even when we talk about, you know, um, numbers of women in parliaments and the whole politics of representation, ultimately, you know, um, our political institutions, our patri patriarchal institutions, but we need to capitalize on our agency and we need to become more politicized in terms of negotiating with, um, uh, uh, with uh, uh, the elites, you know, uh, the patriarchal elites who are controlling our, our politics. And, and, and this, is, this is a completely different conversation in terms of how can we actually become more politicized as, um, as, uh, you know, as, as feminist in our struggle? And how can we actually push you know, for more women to become part of the decision making, not only focusing on the top level, but starting from the local governments, from local councils, all the way to the top level. That's a, that requires a very long strategy. But I think when it comes to politics, you know, we need to be very tactful in negotiating with uh, uh, the political, the patriarchs and the political elites who are controlling our, our, uh, our political institution. That's a reality and that requires patience and, and uh, you know, um, and uh, a very savvy strategies. That's a whole different session. <laughs> Thank you, Hala. So now I'm going to defer to Maureen. I've seen a few comments that say, don't worry about time. This is so inspiring. But I'm going to cut it off and hand back to Maureen from FemNet. Hala, thank you so much. This was, that was amazing. It was amazing. Thank amazing, you very amazing. much. Such thank a you. pleasure. Anytime. Yeah. Oh, and, and we are going okay, to point you to that, Hala. We are going to look for you again, because obviously we didn't make enough time to have you. Um, but I think the team I, has really, absolutely. really and so, I don't say no. This is my weakness. I don't say no to my sisters. So, so we'll definitely reach out, I can assure you, um, so that absolutely. you can talk to this team again. This is a team drawn from seven countries, and we really, really appreciate your, your insights today. We really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. See people okay, ask bye -bye. Oh, send her contacts. She should send her contacts. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Bye bye. <laughs>